Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Lucy. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really great, thank you. Yeah, there's a bit crazy stuff going on at the moment in the UK. Well, around the world with all this Omicron business. So do we stay in fear or do we just say, well, this will pass too, <laughs> like all the other variants? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay calm whilst the storm is kind of building all around us. I'm, I'm just observing people's um, conditioned response to it all. Mm. Lucy, I'm really looking forward to chatting with you today. Um, I think your project and what you're doing is really fascinating. I'm so impressed because you're so young and uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your story and, and all about your project, which I think is really amazing. And I think the listeners will love it as well. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, first of all, where were you born? Have you moved around? A uh, bit about your education, uh, your first job. Did you have a career or maybe not? And how did you get compelled to get into this? So over to you, Lucy. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here, firstly. When it comes to my story, trying to rattle down two decades into a few sentences is going to be quite tricky. Um, yeah. I was born in Cambridge, born and raised. I'm still in and around the area. Yeah. Primary school, secondary school, just kind of went, I always call it a conveyor belt, you know, you kind of dropped in and reception, you kind of just go through the different years um, and then yeah. you kind of just fall off it at the age of 18. Um, <laughs> really, my story isn't one about what happened through my education. It was actually more what happened outside of it. Right. When I was, I always said the turning point is around about the age of 14, which is when I was being asked which options do I want to take for my GCSEs and thinking more longer terms to the career that I wanted. Yeah. And I found myself caught in a quite a large contradiction to being between what I was being told by my teachers, which is the academia and then a long term career path is the route to go. And that's the route to happiness and success and satisfaction and all the rest of it. And then what I was seeing in the world, which was the likes of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, all kind of high school dropouts who yeah. are now seemingly the most successful people in the world. And I always kind of put an asterisk on the word success because I define success differently to how I think a lot of other people define success. When I was 14, I defined it maybe the same way a lot of people do, which is they've got um, extreme wealth um, yeah. in committed relationships, um, or at least work time. Um, whereas for me now, success is more um, on a day to day basis. It's not about the outcomes, so to speak. It's more just about the action that you take on a daily basis to help others. But I'll get onto that a little bit later. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. So 14 years old, I'm, there's a contradiction between what I'm seeing in the world and what my teachers are telling me about where happiness lies, where satisfaction is, where fulfillment is. Mm. And I'm a curious person. There is a big old chasm with a ton load of questions and I just in, ran into it in my own way, really, um, because I couldn't. Well, at least I tried to go to my teachers, but the difficulty is, is they have a job of pushing you on the next step of that ladder um, that everyone else is kind of walking, which is GCSEs, A-levels, university career. Yes. And so they're not going to help you explore something else because obviously that's not helping their own agenda and their own objectives, which have no. been set for them. So if you're not going to get help anywhere else, you've got to help yourself. And that's why I started researching really what happiness is, what fulfillment is, what life is. A lot of existential questions, uh, which is quite big for a 14, 15, 16 year old. And don't totally. get me wrong, I was I was still binging Netflix. It wasn't a day in, day out sort of thing. It was more of kind mm. of on off when I was feeling like it, when my curiosity was peaked, 
sort of thing but yeah uh, um absolutely it was something that I was interested in as a teenager and many years later 18 years old falling out of compulsory education what am I going to do next I had absolutely no idea still I had a passion for business but Mm. I was like I'm 18 years old I can't start business there was so many um unconscious biases and there was so much conditioning that I had still um not yet aware of in who I am and what I believed that I was penning myself in the point is is that now 20 years old I have started my own company and I've used my passion for business to I always say fulfill a purpose I say a profession is passion and purpose entwined it's what are you good at what do you love to do Mm. and how are you going to use it to help others put those two together there is a profession so as I say for me my purpose is helping others live a fulfilling life because it was something that I struggled with and I can help others do and I know that there are a lot of people out there who are struggling with this idea my passion is business I combine the two my project at the moment is keys to clarity and that is guided journals all scientifically backed using positive psychology and the research that I've done over the last six seven years of my life as well as my own personal experience and it's all about helping others uh, empowering others to live fulfilling lives okay so I I have a question well I have Hmm. many questions (laughs) when you were 14 and you realized 14, 15, 16, or in those Mm. kind of years, you kind of realized, okay, everyone's being sheep dipped and they're all falling off the conveyor. (laughs) And then then the question is, now what? (laughs) What happens next type of thing? Um, University, Mm. further education, apprenticeships. I mean, there's a whole myriad of different decisions that young people have to make. When you were doing the on and off research in between Netflix, (laughs) who was your inspiration? Was it your mum, your dad, your uncle, siblings, uh, teachers, uh, YouTube, any specific people that you came across and went, I like what they're talking about? So it's interesting because I think there's a difference between someone that you agree with on an ideological level as you say oh I like what they're talking about sort of thing and an inspiration that's that's something that's different um Mm -hmm. I think if it's someone who inspires you it's oh I want to do what they're doing in a sense yeah instead of I want I agree with what they're saying those are two differences yeah when it came to people that I agreed with on an ideological level it was the likes of Tim Ferriss and all of the people in kind of the self-help community who were talking a lot about autonomy and uh, going out, mastering your own skills, doing your own thing and kind of leaving the corporate world to do something that's more in tune with who they are and what they want. Yeah. When it came to an inspiration, honestly, there wasn't anyone who I saw that I related to doing exactly what I was doing. I was very unique in that sense. There was no other young person, teenager, even in their early 20s, who was out there saying, do you know what? What I'm being taught is, in my opinion, not right. I want to do something different. I don't like this. I'm going to try something different. I'm going out here. I'm doing something different. There, was, there wasn't anyone like that, at least that I could see. Right. Um, because also it takes a time for someone who thinking that way to establish themselves and establish their brand especially when you're so young you've just started yeah so even if there was someone out there doing it they probably weren't established enough for me to have ever found them um, if that makes sense it does and I suppose you were thinking of perhaps a younger person being that inspiration well what about yeah. older people that are in the self-help community, apart from Tim Ferriss, was there anybody that inspired you? There wasn't necessarily an inspiration because these people were all kind of maybe 20 years older than me, maybe 15, 20 years older than me. They had 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they were out there, they were doing their own thing, but they'd never done it at my age in the right. era that we're living at. You know, it was it was slightly different and there was challenges which I was facing, which they never spoke about. Things like, why are my teachers telling me things which are completely wrong and I disagree mm. with? And why when I speak to them that they tell me to kind of refocus on my academics, my academic yeah. studies? Um, that was never... I never saw those discussions happening. So don't get me wrong, I agreed with them, but I'm never um, really inspired by them because no. it was a little bit too removed and they were just so much further down the line from me that I couldn't relate fully to be inspired. Okay. And, right, so the next question then is, if you didn't have that inspiration, but you had somebody like Tim Ferriss, the ide ideology mm. that you kind of kind of agreed with, the self-help, mm. you know, autonomy and stuff. Where did your thinking come from about starting Keys to Clarity, that project? That, um, because I knew I wanted to step into business, yeah. it was more a case of I don't know what business I want to start up. Yeah. Um, I wasn't I looked into kind of drop shipping and property flipping and all of these other so-called business fads if that makes yes. sense but they're not if you look into them there's a lot of um, uh, really good businesses who are using those methods mm. and I was like well this isn't something that I want to do I want to build a brand I want to build a community of people because part of living a fulfilling life is about relatedness it's about connecting with people and being yeah. of service to others so it was really important that there was a community level to what I was doing so it's the next option that I came across was e-commerce and I thought oh there's something here mm. but yeah. the difficulty then came well what am I what product am I going to sell and I it just kind of clicked um one afternoon I was thinking about everything that I'd been learning on fulfillment and satisfaction and I was realizing that business is all about solving people's problems there's a lot of what I know now which can help a lot of people overcome so many different problems because fulfillment is such a wide-ranging issue it goes into work it goes into your love life it goes into your um, personal life it goes into skills and development it, it's it kind of penetrates every aspect of life itself. Mm. So I was, here is a problem. I am in a position where I can solve this problem. Why not? I want to, st I want to start a business. This seems like a credible business idea. I can at least try. And that's yeah. what I did. I went out and tried because I think that's the most important part about, and also something that a lot of people don't realize is you, if you don't put yourself in a position to fail, you don't put yourself in a position to succeed. You've just got to try something sometimes. Yeah, and, yeah. and if it's not, I always say, don't go for the outcomes, work for the output. And in that sense, it's not necessarily about the sales and actually uh, selling the journals, which is, of course, an objective of a company. But yeah. it's about putting in the effort. It's about, because for a lot of people, that is actually a win in itself. It's just acting in alignment with their ambitions is a massive win for them because two months ago, three months ago, they never thought they could or would. That was exactly what happened for me. Yeah. You know? So, um, uh, okay, yeah. Okay, no, that, that kind of answers the question. Um, so did you not go ahead and do the A-levels university thing? You're not on that journey? I did the A-levels. I did the A-levels. Right. I didn't do university because um, in the UK, you have to be in compulsory education until you're 18. So it yeah. was either when I was 16, it was either A-levels or an apprenticeship of some sort. Right, right. Um, and I chose A-levels. And in, in your studies, because you mentioned something about positive psychology yeah. and stuff like that, did you study any topics, subjects that lent in that direction at all? Lent in what direction, sorry? Well, in, in terms of psychology. Oh, yes. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah. Uh, I didn't do anything in my actual A-levels to do with it. That was more about politics and economics because I felt that throughout the 16 years or the 14 years of education that 
thus far I hadn't actually been taught how the world really works on a practical right. basis and so I thought politics and economics would be the best options for me I also did maths because I was half decent at maths at GCSE <laughs> um, yeah yeah but outside of A-levels I was always kind of reading up looking at articles uh, reading a lot of books one of uh, the first books I ever read was um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People I got that when I was about maybe 13 14 years old because that's where wow. it started really it was about productivity and and then it right. moved into more self-help and then it went into larger fulfillment um, that was my kind of route in but ultimately the uh, thought in the back of my head was always happy life what is a happy life what is, how can I make my life easier how can I do it smarter um, that was always the root motivation yeah yeah so okay. um sorry <laughs> no that's perfect that's really helpful because I can see now where the flame got ignited mm. so if you read that book at such a young age then that was a flame that got ignited. It might have only been flickering, but through mm. your teenage years, it started getting brighter and bigger mm. inside of you. Okay, right then. So did you go and get a job or not? I did because I had to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, the conveyor, yeah. I yeah. know, oh, um, you kind of... So I always had kind of little jobs since I was about, I think, 12. I started right. as a, um, there's a and b just down the road and I helped wait the tables on Sunday mornings uh, for breakfast. And then I also helped clean the different rooms afterwards. Right. And then a couple of years later, I went into waitressing um, at a couple of local pubs. Yeah. The f first kind of real job you could say I had was um with it was basically office administration but I yes. went into the job because I wanted to get as much experience in different businesses as possible and the company I was working for was a group of companies which was working in multiple different industries so I got right. a good uh range of experience as to what I might want what I might enjoy um because this was a time again where I wasn't too sure on what business I wanted to start yeah um, and I thought just exploring different industries would be a good start yeah absolutely um but it wasn't anything particularly fancy it was just kind of a part it was there was two jobs both of them part-time um, yeah and it was mostly kind of emails and uh, talking with customers and clients and things like that um but absolutely it allowed me to build up some savings because I did know I wanted to start a company and I knew I was going to need uh, some investment to do that and I didn't really want to take loans from anyone. I wanted to do it off my own back. Yeah. So I built up the fund and then I said, right, let's do it now. And obviously this was a little while after I'd got the idea, because I think once you have the idea, you've then got to build a little bit of confidence to be able to commit to it. Um, yeah. And that took me uh, another couple of months. But then once I committed to it, I went full blast um, doing everything from, as you see, podcasts to writing articles to actually building the product and promoting it and advertising it and all of a sudden uh, as a business owner you know you're doing so many different things and um, it's been an incredible education something I'm very very valuable very very grateful for uh, regardless of how the next year or two three years go. Okay and how long were you in these part-time jobs for would you say? Uh, well I was very fortunate because I joined about three or four months before the pandemic hit right and then uh what they both put me on furlough uh which was very kind of them and then one company had to let me go and the other kept me on until I left to start my company right okay so when did you actually start your company well uh it was June that we registered with the government um this year but right. i've been building the kind of all of the behind the scenes stuff for well over a year before that point okay so pretty yeah. much 
in the pandemic. <laughs> oh yeah, in the pandemic. It's sure. a pandemic yeah. baby. <laughs> it is. It is what they say, don't they? It's like either a business, a baby, um, a dog, or a puppy. Yeah. Or a book. Yeah. Or a book. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Or a business, film. Baby, book. Or a film. <laughs> <laughs> or some will play charades. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So we were kind of bang up to date. Was there anything else that you that we missed? Not really. I mean, of course, there's always details and nuance and uh, you can go into yes. kind of personal relationships and the rest of it. But as for the general progression of my uh, career, it was uh, born and raised in Cambridge, went through primary school pretty easily got into secondary school, really started looking at productivity and how I can be the best student I can be because I am quite studious. I do like to learn. I am a very right. curious human being. That then, in that interest in productivity then left me into the self-help community. I found the likes of Tim Ferriss and uh, uh, other names, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, and then I really started answering the big questions which were on my mind, which is, what is fulfillment? What is a happy life? What is a satisfying life? You know, what is the purpose of life? You know, those big existential yes. questions. And that was um, emphasized due to the education system forcing me to choose GCSEs and A levels and think about my longer term career. Yeah. Great. And then, yeah. So now then, we've got the company, we got a journal hmm. that. So where did the idea for the journal, how did that come about? So. To say, right, I want to do, sell, sell a product. Because yeah. what, oh, there's all sorts of questions coming in my mind. I mean, I've never created a physical product myself because I have this fear of printing something. I mean, times have changed, but you know, mm. when I started my business, I didn't want to print something that yeah. sat in my garage mm. or in my shed and just sat there forever type of thing. And then having to print more and all of this. So it's a really courageous thing to do, to, to start with something mm. that is physical and not digital. So mm. yeah, I'd like to know, get under, to understand how, why a physical product? Okay. So couple of things. The reason why I chose a journal in the first place, mm -hmm. whether it was digital or physical, was because our brains are not memory banks. They are processing units. And for us to get the answers out that we want, we need to ask the right questions. Right. But generally speaking, the culture environment that we live today don't ask the right questions. Instead, it's more just encouraging you and enticing you down the same road as everyone else. And you're seeing this kind of homogenous um, uh, route to satisfaction. Well, I say it's actually more to contentment. You know, a, um, uh, a dream designed for someone else is unlikely to make you happy. You really have mm. to make a unique path. And that means asking the right questions at the right time and, and creating your own vision of your own future that you want and not what maybe everyone else is telling you you should be aiming for. Yeah. So I knew that definitely using every, all of the science that I knew, uh, pardon me, all of the science that I had been researching and also my personal experience, I created uh, a list of journal prompts to help people clarify their vision of their future. And there's a lot of science uh, to suggest that having a uh, clear destination of where you want your life to go and working towards that creates an awful lot of fulfillment, especially if the goal you're working towards is positively impacting the environment and people around you. Right. The next question as to why I chose physical over digital mm. is because it is very easy for a dream and a vision to be intangible and to kind of be something that sits on the computer or kind of just hides away somewhere. Yeah, there's an awful lot of science which suggests that writing something down and taking time because it slows you down. You really have to think about the words you're putting on the page. Makes it a lot more powerful in your mind. So 
I knew that I definitely wanted people to be writing it down, what they wanted, why they wanted it, how they're going to get it, who they're doing this impact for. Because not only will it's because uh, obviously it's it's a physical book, they can pick it up, they can take it with them, it's in their back pocket, it's they can see it, it's a constant reminder. And also they've written all of this out, they've put so much thought and effort into it that it's no longer just a pipe dream that they kind of fantasize about when they're in the middle of spreadsheets, which are just boring and mind uh, numbing. <clears throat> yeah. So, and that's why I really wanted to use a physical book because it's just so much more powerful than a digital tool, I feel personally. You're 100% right. Yeah. Yeah. You're 100% mm. right. That is so important and yeah genius as well uh okay then how did you come up with the questions for the journal well i'd been in this world for over six years by this point i had been using uh, what i've been learning in my own life so i really knew almost instinctively as a kind of a gut what the most important parts were Right. And all the real kind of effort had to go into how was I going to um, order them? What was the framework I was going to give? Because I wanted it to be a smooth process. And I also wanted one section to lead to the next, lead to the next, to lead to the next. And it to feel like you're building something and you're building towards something. And that more and more you are clarifying your vision. Because at the beginning of the journal, it basically goes through all of the different possibilities that you could possibly have that you've never thought about before and that you really, really want. And through the journal, it clarifies it down to one very specific goal that you can take action on every single day. That is a major transformation, which I think a lot of people very rarely ever go through. Their right. minds are always kind of split between three or four different things and they never know which way to go. And so having that one clear goal is really powerful. And that was that was really the struggle in writing uh, the mm. journal. It wasn't actually in creating the journal prompts because I already knew what was important for people to, okay. yeah. to figure out. Um, and it was just a case of how do I phrase the questions as well, I suppose, to make it really clear um, and easy for people to use. And it, I always say to people that the journals are in a process of evolution, um, just as... Uh, as with everything, you know, things get better yes. with time. And I, I would be a fool to say that this is the ultimate journal and it's exactly what you need. And it's like, absolutely, it is very, very powerful for a lot of people, but mm. it's not perfect. It's excellent, which is it does the best of what it does, but it always has room to be better, is how of I course. say, it, how I phrase it. Yeah. No, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you, with yeah. something and, and test it out on people to see what results they're getting. Mm -hmm. So apart from the questions in the journal, what else is in the journal that might be useful for people? So there is a little bit of a background of the science so that you know and you've got the context of why what is in this journal really does work. Yeah. Um, so it, uh, on the idea of goals, uh, there is a little bit of an explanation of Locke and Lantham's goal setting theory of 1968. It's a study that they uh, released. And that's all about high, hard goals. And that the, uh, high, the hardest goals creates the highest uh, results. Right. Effectively. And wow. what those goals are is they are really clear. So they're very measurable. There's a clear target or event date, for example, they're challenging in that when you think about them, there is some discomfort and some resistance because you know you are going to have to be outside of your comfort zone. It is going to push you to grow and to learn something new and to do something different. Um, yes. But equally, they're not so challenging and so complex that it's anxiety inducing because obviously we don't want that. That's when you go into what's called the danger zone. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not that's not what we want. Um, so. Uh, there's a little bit of an explanation, a little bit more of a detailed explanation of that in the journal before you enter the goals section. And as I say, there's more um, of the science explained throughout the journal. But I did want right. to make sure that the journal was as action packed as possible. I didn't want to be sitting there explaining 
what can be quite boring science to people who really don't care. Um, no. So it is majority prompts and majority um, useful pages. Um, and then there's just a little bit of context for people who want to read it and want to understand a little bit further. And you can always look on the website because there are there's an ongoing and building library of articles on there which explains more about the science oh that's excellent okay mm. so there's some digital support then alongside oh as well. absolutely yeah. yeah no when you buy the uh, journal um you can opt into an email series which helps you get the most out of it kind of on a week by week basis just saying just kind of guiding you through the journal guiding you through the different sections so absolutely we don't just uh, give you the journal and leave you to it we are there to support you and to help you as best we can with the journal and afterwards no oh, that's great and is it is it I'm sorry to ask all these questions about how it's working mm. but is it like you've got a beginning where you start and then when you get to the last page you finished it and you kind of clear then mm. having answered all the questions you're clear on the goal and you're clear mm. on you know how you're going to achieve it yeah. and how you're going to attain that fulfillment <laughs> yeah. over time it is very much a journey it is very much a journey when I was thinking about naming the company um I was thinking about the using oh sorry <clears throat> it's all right when I was thinking about naming the company I was thinking about the name journal journeys because very right. much you do go through a journey on and there is a beginning middle and end and you go from someone who is just really almost doing a mind dump of all of the different things that you could possibly want to do now and in the future yeah and as I say it drills down to one very clear specific goal that you can use to make progress towards your dreams in that moment Brilliant. so yeah it's definitely a progression it's definitely a journey for sure and okay then then the, the 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 really burning question is your target audience because you're very very clear that you talk about if I get the phrase right <laughs> unfulfilled millennials. Mm. Yeah. Now, absolutely, those are the people that I am reaching out to the most because I find that I can be of greatest help to most people in that demographic. But I right. the issues that I talk about are kind of whatever generation you may be whatever age you may be so I never kind of turn anyone away if you feel that there is something of benefit to you in what we're talking about in the journal in our articles use them please don't feel that it's only from fulfilled millennials I simply reach out to those people because those are the people I feel I can best help brilliant well I know I've got to already got to purchase four of them <laughs> please do <laughs> two two for my stepsons mm. who i will also send this podcast to so they can have a listen two for my stepsons one for my wife and one for me believe it or not you know i think i've come across people throughout their lives who lose track of where they're going and what their goals are mm. and you know, I've journaled from time to time and they say, do a happiness journal, do this journal, do that journal. Yeah. And I've always started very well and then stopped. I've mm. used apps. I've used, I've never stuck to something. Um, you know, I haven't done a day-to-day journal. And I will tell journal. you why there are mm. so, so many science-backed reasons why that can happen. And yeah, please. I, I mean, well... I could go through the whole list if you want. Oh, it's, I love your mind map. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, I'm telling you, there are so, so many reasons. But what do you what do you think was the one cause? Actually, I'm quite interested because one mm. of the reasons why a lot of people actually um, end up stopping is because uh, stopping consistently is not only is there a reason they keep stopping, but they're completely unaware of what that reason is and they never yeah. address it. So they keep running into the same hurdles every time they try something new. So just right. out of curiosity, what do you think is the same hurdle that you keep coming up against? Hmm. 
Really good question. I think if I was to put it down to one thing, because I kind of, you know, obviously intuitively always know the answer. Mm. And I believe that my, my why wasn't big enough. My why, mm. why am I doing this? You know, what's the outcome? What am I going to get from it? Um, what is the return on my investment for doing this? Mm. And I've never been necessarily clear on that. I mean, mm. I can share openly with the listeners and with you, and you could even give me some guidance on this. Um, mm. And that is, I'm about, well, I've been, this year, I've been focusing on learning a new skill, which is, I do, for my kind of profession, I do mm. whiteboard animation videos for companies, mm. individuals to tell the story about their product or service. And it's great. It's a great product, but I've always wanted mm. to master 2D animation. Mm. And so I've kind of launched into that direction and I've had some excellent online tuition and I've got the software and I've got going and all of a sudden I became so overwhelmed with all of the knowledge that was coming my way I just froze up mm. and I stopped and I've got to start again and I haven't started yet so I would love to use the journal <laughs> mm. to get me started on that goal because perhaps I haven't created enough, big enough why. Anyway, that's that's kind of where yeah. I am. But I'd it's, love to know your your view on it. So it's interesting that you mentioned that there was so much information to you that you mm. kind of, it was on overdrive, you kind of came overwhelmed. You yes. couldn't handle it. There was maybe Correct. anxiety in that. That suggests to me that the goal that you set for yourself was too complex. Right. It was too big. Um, and it meant that you didn't know where you were going. You felt that you were going in 20 different directions. You couldn't go in just one. Yes. And so what I would say 100%. to you as well, narrow that down. If you're talking 2D animation, well, break that down into the different skills that are in 2D animation. Or um, I'm not, I'm not uh, very well versed no, no. in what 2D animation is, but if there is right. something specific that you want to um, go through first and set yourself a roadmap. And this is something that is included in the journal. It's one of the sections. Yeah. Effectively, what you do is you say, well, this is the big overall kind of passion project that I have. For example, I want to learn 2D animation. Yeah. But then you break that down into the separate sections. What are the different skills that I need to develop okay, well, I'm going to give three months to develop this skill. And that's going to be January to March. Then yeah. in April, I'll start the second skill. And then the third and then the fourth. By telling yourself and giving yourself that roadmap, if a bit of information comes your way, that it's about a skill that you're doing kind of six months down the line, you'll just save that to wherever that um, skill uh, knowledge is being put in your file system. And yeah. then you can refocus on what skill you're focusing on for that time period. That way you stop the complexity um, and you stop the overwhelm, you stop the anxiety. Right. And it just makes it that much more simply. You can keep your focus, you can keep your attention and you can keep moving forward. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense because that's exactly... So there are so many different skills you've got to learn for 2D yeah. animation, right? Mm. And I know the kind of purpose I want to use it for. I basically want to do the, you know, the whiteboard animation with 2D kind of embedded mm. in it. And I was jumping to that bit mm. of how can I solve that before really understanding the 2D animation properly. Yeah, And it was just getting... And yeah, there are many different levels in the software. There are many different levels in making things move. Uh, it is a really, it's probably the most taxing, complex thing I've ever tried to master. And I'm a, of a mature age. You can see my white hair <laughs> and lack of it. So, you know, I'm not a young person anymore. So my gray mm. cells must be, 
you know, not as good as they used to be. Um, but that that's a brilliant suggestion. I love that. Yeah. And I will definitely look at that with and your journal, wait. of course. Thank you very much. Um, one thing I would just uh, say, because you were saying a lot about having clear motivations. Mm. I think I mentioned you said, I don't know what I'm doing it for. Mm. And it just in my head, it made me think, right, well, have you got external motivations or internal motivations? And what I mean by that mm. is, are you doing it so that you can attain something in the future? For example, are you doing it so that you can get a house or a car or a a pay rise or a promotion something that's external or are you doing it for pleasure and enjoyment for example that's a really good internal motivation yeah. um and uh, this again this is another section of the journal and it will go through all of this with you yeah um but making sure that you have a really clear um internal motivation for the necessary actions you need to take to achieve the goal is really important because we are creatures of conditioning. We have the same behaviors in and out. For us to change those behaviors, not only mm. does it take um, a lot of consistency, but it also takes a lot of consistency over a long time. And it's something like at least kind of four, five, six months, and then you're looking like you're probably going to change your behaviors. You know, this is this is not a quick fix. It's never a quick fix. And those internal motivations, those whys if you've got them really clear and really precise and written down in a, in a nice little book, which you can come back to every morning and just to remind yourself what you're committed to and why you're committed to it, it will, it will make it easier to recommit. It will make it easier to say, right, this is what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. The one other thing I would say, if you are struggling to recommit every single day and stay consistent is keep a track of all of your small wins all of your progress, all of the action that you've taken in pursuing this goal. Right. Because the more invest, invested you are in time or money or whatever it may be. Yeah. Then actually the more consistent you will want to be with that previous behavior. It's called consistency bias. Right. Um, and it will just, it will make it easier to keep recommitting. So those are the two things which I'd say have really clear written down remind yourself every day why you're doing whatever goal you're pursuing yeah and also keep a track of all of the small wins and i'd say add to it every single day you know put a date and uh what action you did maybe how much time you invested and keep a track because both of those will really help you to stay committed to the cause love it love it yeah that's those are excellent suggestions and definitely not something that I've done um, with this project that I'm doing. No, I, I've not. Because I, I, even whilst you were saying it, I can think of all the things that I've managed to achieve, even mm -hmm. having gotten started, you know, having attended all the tuitions, uh, having learned the software. And I've have achieved a huge amount, but I've never... Mm -hmm recognize those in myself i've never congratulated myself for achieving exactly. those i've um, only I, ever looked at the negative side to say i haven't completed it i haven't been able to master it i am failing and that's mm. what that's the feeling that's coming up inside of me you know yeah. one book i would really recommend you read and it's a book that's only come out recently and it's by dr benjamin hardy called the gap in the game and effectively, all it talks about is you can either be in the gap, which is you can see the distance between what your goal is and where you are now. And you can feel sad about the fact that you're not where you want to be. Mm. Or you can look at the game, which is where you are now compared to where you were before you started. Right. And you can look at one of them is very positive. One of them is very negative. One of them is motivating. One of them is not. I'm sure you can figure out which. Um, yes. but absolutely um it's on kindle it's um i think you can buy it hardback and paperback as well so definitely i'd recommend you read that it's the gap in the game by dr benjamin hardy okay we'll definitely include a link in the show notes for our listeners as well that's great yeah i love that that sounds that's going to be my christmas read i think <laughs> <laughs> oh wonderful okay so what else can you tell us about the journal? You made some notes. Um, are there some other 
bits of information you'd like to share? There's so much. It, <laughs> it is... Well, what's the most important thing that people need to know in order to convince them to go online, wherever it is, which I'm sure you're going to share with us so that oh, they can purchase it? Honestly, regardless of whether or not you purchase the journal, the important yeah. thing is, is you do have to have a clear vision of your future because here's the thing. Life is exponential. It's uh, well, sorry, life has a trend of being exponential and it will go exponentially to whether it is that your behavior is leading it. So, for example, if yeah. I had absolutely no vision and I had no idea what I was going to be doing tomorrow in a week, in a month, in a year, in 10 years, I'm just going to be bothering about what's happening today. I'm just going to be saying, well, I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat. I want chocolate, so I'm going to eat chocolate. I don't want to go to the gym instead I want to watch Netflix, so I'm going to go and watch Netflix. It's all in the moment. It's all instant. It's instant gratification. You feel good in the moment. Yeah. However, what do these behaviours lead to exponentially? Well, the more chocolate you eat, the more obese you're going to get. We all know that that's going to have uh, damage on your health. Yeah. Um, again, with the gym or anything else like that, there are so many different um behaviors which if they are instant gratification generally lead to a negative exponential trend through your life leading right. to poor health or poor outcomes whatever it may be if you have a vision for your future every single day you're going to be thinking right well i want to achieve that so i need to make sure that i'm around tomorrow <laughs> to be able to achieve that so you're going to eat more healthily. You're going to go to the gym and you're going to look after yourself. You're better in physical, you're better in mental. Uh, all of your action is then going to be uh, aligned. And there's a lot of satisfaction that comes from knowing that your actions align with your ambitions. Yeah. All of a sudden you can see the positive progress which you're making towards something that's meaningful to you. I always say that fulfillment is tenaciously working towards a valent goal. That means that the goal that you've set for yourself is emotional and there is emotional meaning behind it. We're all very um, social creatures. We're emotional creatures. We need to have a connection with people. It's why whatever goal you're working towards, always try to know who it is you're benefiting by pursuing this goal and seeing the impact that you're making on a daily basis. The only way that my personal belief that your life is exponentially positive or has a trend of being exponentially positive is if you have a very clear vision for your future that you want to pursue. Otherwise, you're just going to be in today. You're going to be doing a lot of instant gratification behaviors and it's just going to negatively trend downwards. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you just become a drifter. And I guess that's why we have so much addiction to social media as well, I believe. Because, Ooh. yeah, why, why are people so addicted to those instant gratification on social media? You know, I need to post something. I need to get likes, comments, loves. Uh, or even if it's controversial, I need comments. I need confirmation of what I'm thinking. Yeah, so, the, other, the other element of Instagram is generally speaking, when people are not living a fulfilling life they mm. need to find an escape from their own reality and yes. so they will be interested in, in other people's lives and they'll follow other people's lives more then that's when social media comes into play that's when they're watching reality tv all the time um, mm. or they're reading books all the time they're just they're never in their own reality they're never making real action and progress in their own life because they're so busy looking at everyone else's life yeah. Um, and being invested in others lives and don't get me wrong it's a balance absolutely have an interest in other people's lives it's very important for a fulfilling life yeah. that you have good friendships with people and you've got transformational relationships which is all about investing in one another and being there sorry pardon me being there for one another but it's about balance right. and it's about making sure that um if you are invested in their life it is about growing together it's not just about escaping your own reality because you uh, aren't building towards anything that's meaningful to you and you don't see the value in your own life if that yeah. makes sense makes a huge amount of sense 
Yeah, there was a question that came up in my head then. Um, I, it's gone out. Okay. No um, how do people get hold of the journal and how do they connect with you? Um, tell us a little bit more about the email thread thing as well. So what do oh, people yeah, get? Yeah. yeah, tell us, do your pitch, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> so because absolutely I believe that business should be purpose-led, it's all about helping people um, and being of service to others. What I do is I include a free workbook with every podcast that I do, which is going to be in the show notes. And that will have three exercises based on our conversation today, which will help uh, you lead a more fulfilling life. So please go down, uh, have, take a look at that. I do ask for your email um, just because uh, that way I, you can get onto my email list and we can start kind of building a relationship with you and I can start helping you um, a whole lot more. And again, all for free. If you are interested in the journal, then you can get that at keystoclarity.co.uk. Um, I would just like to say there is less than 100 available at the moment just because of the time. So yes. if you are interested, do go and get one quickly. I don't want to be sold out um, because if we do sell out, we won't be restocked until the new year. Right. Um, and then if you want to reach out to me and for an email, if you've got any questions at all, please do. There's a contact us form on the website, keystoclarity.co.uk, or you can reach us on Instagram, which is at keys underscore two underscore clarity. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'll make all those notes as well so people can read those and they can click on the links and mm. everything else. So what's, I have to ask this because you're all about kind of goal setting and having a vision for the future. I'd love to know what yours is if you're prepared to share it. Where are no, you taking absolutely. this business? So just to lead into a little bit of uh, science for you, there is importance that you have a hierarchy of goals and that right. your highest goal is what is known in psychology as an ultimate cause or a final cause. And it basically means what is the overall theme of the impact your life, you want your life to make on existence, really? And for yeah. me, at the moment, because it's always provisional, it can always change. At the moment, yes. it's to help other people live more fulfilling lives. Yes. That is my ultimate cause. The next step down from that is having passion projects or medium, medium goals. These are my business for right now. Keys to Clarity is one of them. And it's, as I say, it's literal purpose is to help others live a more fulfilling life through the guided journals that we promote and also through all of the podcasts that I'm on um, and the articles that we write. Everything that we do is to help others live a more fulfilling life. Yeah. And then lastly, the kind of lowest level goals are more of the kind of day to day tasks and routines, for example, going on this podcast with you. Uh, yes. This. Um, uh, that would be kind of the third run of the hierarchy. So if we're talking about kind of the greatest vision um, as in purpose, it is how can I help others live a more fulfilling life? When it comes to more of a personal level, which is, I think, more what you were asking about. Yeah. Um, really, for me, in the next 10 years, so in 10 years' time, I'll be 30, about to turn 31. What I want to do is have a series of businesses all themed around helping others live a more fulfilling life um, right. in different ways and doing different things. I'd like to help um, individuals through investment, um, helping them set up their own companies because part of being uh, fulfilled is having autonomy. And I think the greatest form of autonomy is being your own boss, it's being a freelancer. And if I can help other people set up their own companies, I would love to do that. So yeah. being either an angel investor or a mentor in some way is definitely a part of my vision. And then the third part is about philanthropy. And right. um, uh, one thing I would uh, love to do is help the houseless community um, in some way, giving them just a baseline uh, to basically rebuild their lives in a different way because we're, we're out here, we're doing our best, we're doing our best not to fail and fortunately we may have a safety net but there are some people who don't have that and if they do and they fall through the cracks it can take them sometimes years if they ever do to build them back up just to a baseline and yes. I want to kind of be able to 
provide a that safety net for those individuals who don't have it so that they don't spend those years doing that and that they can just got, start on the baseline and they can start building their life um, and building a more fulfilling life um, which has that security for them so Brilliant. those are kind of the three major um, avenues I would like to pursue and have set up in 10 years time fantastic I love it well I hope this podcast is just a tiny little step in that journey to get your message out there and I'm sure people will take note uh, as well and um, get your journal I'm sure well thank you so much and and just to reiterate to make sure people heard there is less than 100 and I'm, I'm not joking I'm not saying that to no. push anything <laughs> I, I, I do mean there is literally less than 100 now so um, please do if you would like it um, uh, buy it now and I'm not too sure when this is episode is coming out it's being filmed on the 15th um, but there is still a chance in the UK for to get delivery before Christmas um, just if that was something that you were interested in yeah this this episode will be out very soon don't worry okay Lucy, thank you so much for your time and for your wisdom at your really young age. I love it. I love that you're helping other people, particularly millennials, to, to live more fulfilling lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the great work that you're doing in this world already and will be thank doing you. in the future. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful to catch you <laughs> at a young age mm -hmm. and early on in your journey uh thank you so much for coming on the podcast not at all thank you for having me it's been a pleasure take care and speak to you soon bye for now if you've enjoyed this podcast please rate subscribe and share at will i'm always looking for more listeners and guests so do get in touch please you can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.